Ask anyone around the world to make a drawing of a fish and most people would come up with something more or less looking like this. Which indeed would fit a lot of fish species. These fusiform animals are good swimmers. They are streamlined to reduce drag that is caused by moving through the water. Many predators, as well as prey, are shaped like this to be able to move fast, either to chase or escape quickly. All of them spend a lot, if not all, of their time in the water column. Fish shape-wise, however, this ovoid form is just the tip of the iceberg. Thanks to something wonderful called evolution, fish come in the most bizarre shapes imaginable. Because they adapted to so many different habitats and lifestyles, fish are the most diverse group of vertebrates on the planet. Apparently, there are as many different fish species than there are species of reptiles, birds, amphibians and mammals combined. The physical appearance of a fish reveals something about how it moves, where it lives and how it feeds. Thus just by looking at a fish, you can tell a lot about its way of life. Eels, for example, have evolved into a shape that is far from the classical torpedo contour we associate with the general idea of a fish. Some use their elongated body to bury themselves in the sand. They dig their hole, head or tail first. Other eel species make use of their long bodies to hide in narrow crevices in the reef. They anchor themselves using their long tail. Seahorses too use their tail as an anchor. As you can see, their tail is far from the forked form we associate with fast swimming fish. In fact, seahorses might just be the slowest swimming fishes in the ocean. They have adapted to a hidden life and feed on small crustaceans they suck out of the water flow using their long snout. Close relatives of the seahorses, the ghost pipe fishes, have a similar elongated snout. But in order to snatch the little shrimp and other stuff they feed on, they have adapted to a life upside down. In ways of camouflage, they outperform their nephews by mimicking the color pattern and shape of the habitat they hide in. Like seaweeds, sponges, hydroids or corals. The ghost pipefish you see on the left is so well camouflaged, it is not noticed and consequently eaten by the frogfish on the right. The frogfish is at least equally well disguised, since the ghost pipefish does not see any harm in approaching the notorious fish eater. Frogfish use their camouflage as a hunting technique. They are so-called sit-and-wait predators. 
they share this trait with stonefish, scorpionfish and the like. Frogfish belong to the anglerfishes. Many members of this family live in the deep. These batfish, however, prefer shallower waters. Anglerfishes have a dorsal fin that has been modified into an elysium upholding a lure or esca, which they use to attract prey, much like a fisherman does. The Latin name of batfishes, Orcocephalidae, means swollen head. The function of such a big head is still unclear. On the other hand, the shape of the head of hammerhead sharks has many advantages. Thanks to their weird hammer shape, these sharks have even better vision, sense of smell, electroreceptivity and maneuverability than any other shark. But if you think your head shape like a hammer is extreme, listen to this. Many flatfish species have altered in such an extreme way that during their development from larva to adult, one of the eyes migrates to the other side of the head, leaving one side blind. They then turn sideways to live the rest of their lives on the bottom, with their blind side facing down. The other side, the one with both eyes, is facing upwards and can often change color to match the background. While flatfish may have taken adaptation to the extreme, other fish have adjusted in varying degrees to a life on or near the seafloor as well. Flatheads, for example, have a flattened head, hence their name. Their bodies are elongated and cylindrical and often buried in the sand. Rays evolved into discs with enlarged pectoral fins they use in an undulating or flapping manner to fly seemingly effortlessly through the water. The mouths of the mersal rays are positioned downwards to feed off the substrate they live on. Near the base of their tail, stingrays have a venomous spine, which they use in defense. Devil rays have lost their spine, but developed a couple of cephalic fins in the course of evolution. These cephalic fins are used for feeding. They guide nutrient-rich water to the mouth, while the ray swims with wide open gape through plankton-rich water. When not feeding, devil rays curl their cephalic fins into a horn shape in order to reduce drag and move more effectively through the ocean. Instead of flattening themselves to merge with the sandy bottom, gurnards have their body fine-tuned to a life walking on the sea floor. They use their pelvic fins to tiptoe around. When expanded, the brightly colored pectoral fins are used to intimidate predators. Now take all the strange traits mentioned before, like pelvic fins modified to walk, a flattened body, enlarged pectoral wings, a long snout, combine them then add bony plates to cover the body, and behold, you have a sea moth. If Edgar Allan Poe is right and strange proportions are needed to create beauty, well then, the oceans are filled with exquisiteness. Now next time when someone asks you to draw a fish, would you still come up with something like this? <laughs>